Let's work through a perpetual inventory problem, but this time using LIFO. So artichokes are us uses a perpetual inventory system. We're told on June 1st, the beginning inventory is 10 units at $5 a piece. Then on June 5th, we make a purchase of 15 units at $6 a piece. We sold 10 units on June 10th. On June 12th, we make another purchase, this time 20 units at $8 a piece, and then on the final day, we make a sale of 25 units. So using LIFO, using last in, first out, we need to find the cost of goods sold and our ending inventory. So we're going to write them all out using this table, so that way we keep everything organized. So on the first day, on June 1st, we had a beginning inventory of 10 units at $5. So we write that 10 at $5 equals $50, which we get by multiplying the number of units and the unit cost. We write that over in the beginning inventory column. Then, at the end of June 1st, we also had an inventory of 10 at $5 a piece for a total of $50. So we write that as well over in the ending inventory column. Now on this next day, on the 5th, we purchased 15 units at $6 a piece. 15 times 6 equals 90. So we write that over in the purchases column. Then we head over to the ending inventory column. We still had those 10 units at $5. Those haven't, haven't gone anywhere yet. So we want to write that out again. And then underneath that, we write these new 15 units at $6 a piece. So this way we know which ones came in first, which ones came in last. So then that way when we have to make a sale, we know which ones to take from. So on June 10th, we make a sale. We sold 10 units. Since we're using LIFO, we want to push out, we want to sell the last ones that came in, right? Last in, first out. So the last ones that came in were those units at $6 a piece. So we are going to sell 10 units at $6 a piece. So we write that over in our cost of goods sold column. Now when we go over to our ending inventory, we can check to see what we have left. We didn't sell any units at $5 a piece, so we still have all 10 of those. So we write out 10 at $5 equals $50. Now these units at $6 a piece, we had 15 of them, we just sold 10, so now we only have 5 units left at $6 a piece, which are worth a total of $30. Now on the 12th, we make another purchase. So we purchase 20 units at $8 a piece, 20 times 8 gets you 160, and then we update what we have in our inventory over in the ending inventory column. We still have all 10 units at $5 a piece. So we write that out again. We still have those five units at $6 a piece. So we write that out just under those at five. And then the last piece that we write out are these 20 new units that we just got. So we write out the 20 at $8 a piece for a total of $160. So right now in our inventory in our warehouse we have three different groups of inventory we have some inventory at five dollars a piece we have some at six and we have some at eight so now when we go into our last day here on june 28th we made a sale of 25 units so the last in is the first out so we need to sell 25 units. So that means that all 20 of those units at $8 that we had, all of those need to leave. All of those need to be sold. 
So we sell all 20 of those. And then we still have five more units that we need to sell. So that's where that five at $6 comes into play that you see right now under cost of goods sold. Because we need to sell a total of 25 units. So after we sell all of our units at $8, then we go back to what was the next newest group of inventory that we had, and those were the units at $6 a piece. So when we update our ending inventory here on June 28th, we can go step by step. We can see our units at $5, we didn't sell any of those here on the 28th, so we still have all 10 units at $5 a piece. So we write that out for our ending inventory. The five units that we had at $6 a piece, well, we sold all five of those, so we don't have any of those left. So we don't write that out under ending inventory. Then the 20 units at $8 that we had, back on June 12th, we sold all of those here on the 28th, so we don't have any of those units left either. So the only units that we have left on June 28th are those 10 units at $5 a piece. So now we can figure out what was our cost of goods sold in this problem. So the way that we can calculate this is by adding up the total values of your sales. So we have $60, 160, and 30. We get those numbers from right there. So we go over to the cost of goods sold column and we take our total amounts. And we wanna add up those three. And when you add up those three, you'll get $250. So your cost of goods sold in this problem is $250. Now your ending inventory. Your ending inventory, we, we want to look just on the last day. The very last day, what was the total value of your ending inventory? That's $50. We get that by taking the total of just that final day.